Welcome to Universe Live. I'm Hassan El Sheikh. And I'm Evadane Hendricks. It's Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. Breaking news President Kevin J. Worthen is released as president of Brigham Young University at the devotional today. President Russell M. Nelson is announcing the conclusion of President Kevin Worthen's remarkable service as president of Brigham Young University. President Worthen served in the office for nine years. He was called as university president in 2014. The officers of the board have called President Christopher Shane Reese to be the new president of Brigham University. The change in university leadership is effective immediately. It is not known who will replace President Reese in the AVPS office. BYU police are searching for a man who got into Helaman Halls and may have stolen some women's clothing. Investigators say the man unlawfully entered the female dorm on Friday morning. Anyone with information should call police. 25 BYU students from different majors unite to fight declining milk consumption. To stop the trend, students created 21 unique milk jug and carton designs in hopes of getting people to consume more milk. Actress Gwyneth Paltrow appeared in Utah court this morning. She's being sued for a 2019 skiing incident. The plaintiff claims the actress crashed into him while skiing at Deer Valley. He's suing for nearly $3 million. Don't stop believing, Provo. Journey will be at the headliner at the Stadium of Fire. The Independence Day celebration will be held on July 1st at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Tickets will be available on Friday at freedomfestival.org. You're probably familiar with and may even be a fan of podcasts, but have you ever wondered what it takes to create them? Tabby Freitas visited BYU Radio to learn more about the production process behind one of their main podcasts, The Appleseed. This is BYU Broadcasts, home to BYU TV and BYU Radio. And today we're going to learn the process behind producing a radio show. Amongst the many radio shows produced by BYU Radio is The Appleseed, a storytelling show hosted by Sam Payne. Appleseed, tellers and stories on BYU Radio. The Appleseed is a program, a radio program and a podcast dedicated to performance storytelling. It's been on the air since 2013, so we're just coming into a decade of production on The Appleseed. The show is dedicated to bringing all different types of tales into the homes of families in an effort to start important conversations and connect people. This one, because it certainly... So the important thing to do, first of all, is to find really great storytellers. And so uh, we look for the kind of performers who can really captivate an audience. Once the performers are invited, they come into the studio for a live storytelling session in front of an audience. The producers then look through the archives and choose two of those stories previously recorded. They make sure it will be compatible and fit within the 28 minutes episode. Then they write a script where the host will introduce those stories together. In between all these things, we're, we're putting in like intro music. We have a little montage of clips that we play at the beginning. We have little bumpers that are just like little musical hits that last four to five seconds or so. Um, that go in between the segments to kind of like guide the listener into, okay, we're leaving the host content, now we're going into the performance. Once it's all recorded, a sound engineer works on connecting all the different to parts to together now. on Adam, a draft of what the final episode will sound like. Story. When the host and the producers are happy with the result, hey, Sam, the episode is ready for the final the touches and to be uploaded together, into the system. New... We feel like telling stories designed to connect families in the act of storytelling together is sacred work. Uh, it feels a little bit holy to us. The Appleseed releases new episodes every Thursday. You can listen to it live on BYU Radio, online through the BYU Radio website, or on your favorite podcast platform. For the live universe, I'm Tauta Freitas. Governor Cox signed 66 new bills into law. The statutes include a domestic violence law, it ensures police officers take a lethality assessment on every domestic violence report. The parents of murder victim Gabby Petito have given their support for the legislation. Also signed into law, possessing a dangerous weapon while under the influence of alcohol will be a Class B misdemeanor. And the brine shrimp is now the official state crustacean in Utah. These shrimp can only be found in the Great Salt Lake. Governor Cox is kicking off the 2023 Connecting Utah Tour. 
The first stop of the tour was in Tooele on Monday. With this tour, the governor is set to visit all 29 counties in Utah to meet with students, residents, and business owners. This tour is a part of his efforts to help Utahns learn how to disagree better. He is also hoping to share his vision of the future, and he says the future of Utah is bright. Four hikers were rescued from a slot canyon in Santa Fe County early Sunday morning by the Department of Public Safety. The hikers entered the canyon late in the day on Saturday night and had not returned by 3 a.m. the following morning. According to DPS, the hikers were unprepared for the extended exposure and were, not or, and were found cold and wet. A helicopter flew over the canyon and used the cable to reach them at their location. The rescue team reportedly used every foot of cable on board for the extraction. Search and rescue were also on the ground preparing for a plan B in case the air rescue did not work. Today is the annual Utah Valley Job Fair. The Utah Valley Convention Center is hosting the event from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. in downtown Provo. This job fair is designed to match local job seekers with potential employers and is free for anyone looking for employment. 119 hiring companies will be in attendance, including organizations such as U.S. Army, Marriott Vacations Worldwide, and Utah Behavioral Services. Event organizers recommend that attendees dress to impress and bring multiple copies of their resume. For more information, go to utahvalleyjobfair.com. This week marks the start of the City of Provo's annual spring cleanup. The city will be providing a series of dump sites for residents to offload regular trash, green waste, and recyclable metal for the next 40 days. These dumpsters are available from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. during the work week and from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday. Items such as concrete, auto parts, and household chemicals will not be accepted and should be disposed of elsewhere. For more information on the times, locations, and accepted items, check out the city's Twitter page or sanitation website. Brighton Resort has received more than 700 inches of snowfall and the season isn't over. The ski resort says this groundbreaking season may continue to break records. It's noted that the total will increase as it is expected to snow more throughout the season. Brighton Resort is the first ski resort in Utah to surpass 700 inches, and the resort wonders if it will be able to hit the 800 mark before closing day. Many resorts have already announced that they plan to extend their season a few weeks to take advantage of the abundance of the snow this year. Other Ulisa Suarez meets with the Prime Minister of Tonga. Elder Suarez and the Prime Minister exchanged gifts at their meeting last Thursday on the island. Elder Suarez presented the Prime Minister with a st statuette featuring a family as he explained the importance of the family in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. The Prime Minister pre presented Elder Suarez with a carved nativity scene. Before meeting with the Prime Minister, Elder Suarez was welcomed by the youth of Tonga with performances in dance, singing, and poetry. The first temple in Virginia is hosting an open house starting this week. The Richmond, Virginia temple was first announced by President Russell M. Nelson in April 2018. The building features architectural designs and landscaping choices to honor Virginia and its history. It also has several or original and classic pieces of art. Virginia Governor Glenn Yorkin encourages everyone to take the opportunity to tour the building. It's an extraordinary uh, and magnificent facility uh, that brings together the, the, the history of Virginia. The temple will be open to the public for open house tours from Saturday, March 25th until sun Saturday, April 15th. The open house will not be open on Sundays and will also be closed on Saturday, April 1st for general conference. It's survive and advance for gymnastics in LA this weekend. The Cougars finished number 33, which gets them a chance to compete for regionals. Their first meet in the chase for regionals is tomorrow at 4 Eastern against conference rival Boise State. The Broncos and Cougars faced off twice this season, splitting the series, which means the rubber match will be win or go home tomorrow. Speaking of crosstown rivals, BYU has a matchup with the UVU Wolverines today. The Cougars fell short in their three-game series with LMU last week. The Wolverines roll into town this afternoon with the good news that BYU is 34-9 all-time against UVU, including winning the last 13 straight. You can watch on BYU TV or listen on BYU Radio today at 3 Mountain Time. The 28th annual Cougs vs. Cancer Run was held over the weekend. Universe Live reporter Ariel Harmer shows us what it's all about. The 28th annual BYU Cougs vs. Cancer Run was held on BYU campus on Saturday, March 11th. 
The event honors former BYU president Rex E. Lee, an avid runner who passed away from cancer in 1995 and raises money for cancer research at BYU. Every penny raised goes towards funding BYU students who do cancer research through the Stone Center for Cancer Research. The event begins each year with opening ceremonies and a warm-up led by Cosmo the Cougar. The run kicks off with a kids 1K fun run around the Clarence F. Robinson outdoor track and field. Here they come. The main event, the 5K, takes runners from the track to a loop around BYU campus. After runners complete the course, they can refuel at the snack table and enjoy music from a live DJ before medals are awarded to the top three finishers in each age category. Runners are invited to fill out a card explaining why they run and their connection to cancer. I've yet to be a human that hasn't been in some way been impacted by cancer. The Cougs vs. Cancer 5K is held once a year, typically the second Saturday of March. So make sure to start training now so you can join Cosmo in the run against cancer next year. Keep engaged, right? Reporting for Universe Live in Provo, I'm Ariel Harmer. Thanks for joining us today for Universe Live. Have a great day.